All righty, y'all. Are you ready to rock and roll? Jump on your pony and let's go. We're in Acts chapter 7 right now. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. Bam. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charan and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Charan. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell. And y'all, I don't think I turned my mic on. I had it on a charger. Hang on just a minute. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get here, do you? No, nope, it was on, so hang on while I turn it back on. And we're connected to Bluetooth again. I never met that dude that's got a Bluetooth. If y'all, I looked all over the place. He's around and he works. I can turn him on and off, but I never have found him yet. All right. And he gave him no inheritance in it. Nope. Not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him when as yet he had no child. And God spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn into a strange land and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil for 400 years. Whew. I reckon I just got 330 to go. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge. And, and after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begat Jacob. And Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. You all remember that story? I did a couple of videos about that. I need to lift up my head and try to look at y'all eyeball to eyeball. Y'all remember that song, Lift Up Your Head, O oh, Your Gates? Well, I ain't a gate, but I'm going to try to remember to lift up my head. Now there came a dearth over all the lands of Egypt and Chanan, and great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, y'all remember all this, I hope, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him, 
and all his kindred three score and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and our fathers, and were carried over into Serchem and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money and the sons of Emor, the father of Sychem. But when the time of the promise grew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. And they kept growing and they kept multiplying and they kept growing and they kept multiplying. And thus came the crowd of people that Moses led up out of the land of Egypt. Goodness gracious. Pharaoh was hard-headed about letting them go because they were his slaves. Now we're talking about the Jewish people here. Uh, Jacob, Joseph, and Jacob's fathers. Kept multiplying and multiplying and multiplying and multiplying as the sands of the seas or as the stars of the sky. God said, let's get them out of there. <laughs> but Pharaoh didn't want to let them go because he was enjoying having all those slaves. But God got them out. But the people complained and complained and complained. Talking about the Jews. They, I, I, I won't tell you all the whole story. I'll be, be here preaching and teaching and flapping my jaws all night long. And most of tomorrow. Well, for 40 years and 40 nights, that's how long it took them. Oh, Lord, where I leave off at? Oh, right there. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him. Well, I think I was, I already got Jacob in the grave, so I guess I didn't find where I was at. Right there, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another king arose which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred and even entreated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end they might not live, in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. Remember the little boy that was put in a basket? And that basket, that little baby that was put in a basket, and that basket was put in a Nile River. All right, that's where we're at. Uh, we're all over the place, but that's that's one place where we were at. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged himself that was avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed that brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why do you wrong one another? But he 
that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou did the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Madian, where he begat two sons. And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. I would too. If I saw a burst, a bush burning and burning and burning, but not burning up, I would wonder too. And that bush started talking to him. That burning bush started talking to Moses and said, I am the God of our fathers. I, if I saw a bush burn and not burn up, I might run away. Instead of waiting to hang around, I'd wait and see if it would talk to me. But not Moses. Then Moses trembled. I would have trembled too, friends. I would probably mess in my britches. And durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, put off thy shoes. I would have done had my shoes filled up with when I messed in my pants. So I'd probably had mine off already. Then the Lord said to him, put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning and their groaning and their groaning and their groaning, and am come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. That was, this is God talking, yo. I mean, this is that burning bush talking. Said, and now come, and I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler of, and a judge? The same God did send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. You remember the bush that was burning and talking to him? That bush. He brought them out after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto your, you of your brethren like unto me, him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the, an, with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai <clears throat> and with their fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us to whom the fathers would not obey but thrust him from them and, and their hearts turned back again into Egypt, saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us for, us for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt. We wot not what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days and offered a sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Woe be unto them. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, 
ye have offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the store of your god, Ramphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away from Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, and who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him an house, howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me? <laughs> That's a bam for God. What house will you build for me, saith the Lord? Or what is your place of my rest? <laughs> That's a bam. God gave him a, two good punches right there. Hath not my hand, this is God speaking, hath not my hand made all these things? And they thought they were going to give it to God. I guess they don't comprehend the part about everything belonging to him. Everything was made by him. And this is God speaking now. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. He said, hath not my hand made all these? And this is the next thing he said. Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do you. They're slow learners. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into the heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Pam, yo. And said, Behold, I see the heaven open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the wickedness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said that he fell asleep. Now y'all hang on, let me see what where I started. Okay. I hadn't got very far yet. 
I got pretty far flapping my jaws, so didn't I? But that doesn't glorify God. All right, y'all, if you still buckled up, stay buckled up and cinch it a little bit tighter. Here we go, chapter 8, book of Acts. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsy, and that were lame, were healed, and there was great joy in that city. Well, hallelujah. I, I'd have great joy, too. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God, and to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wandered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Have y'all noticed my eyes tonight? They look pretty. There ain't much about me that looks pretty, but my eyes sure look pretty tonight. All right, sorry about that detour. It was not planned. <laughs> I just, I get to admiring myself and it's hard to go away. who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as, ye, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, 
that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Simon Peter just didn't get it about 99% of the time. Y'all ever noticed it, that I liked him? You can see in the book of Acts and other places some mighty good things he did. <laughs> but there's so much. It's like he was speaking from outer space or something. All right. And he sure did like to go fishing when he'd been bad. Oh, goodness gracious, y'all. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money that has neither port nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent thereof, therefore, of this wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And so he had been a bad boy, and his name went back to Simon again, Simon Peter. Peter when he's good, Simon when he's bad. Back and forth, back and forth. Like a ping pong, bing bong, bing bong. Okay. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Not desert, but desert. There's a big difference. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasures, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Esaias the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go nearer and join thyself to this character, I mean to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Esaias and understood and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sleep sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. You all know what he's talking about. And his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. You know what he's still talking about? And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, 
thou mayest? And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now I'm going to stop right there for two or three hours, friends. Did y'all just hear that part? I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Bam! That is all anybody in the whole world ever born has to do to be saved. There is no works on our parts. Somewhere I've gotten some scriptures down to make just a short little quick video. I've done it before, but I don't know. It would be easier to make a new one and probably a little bit better this time on how to be saved. There's nothing to it, y'all. I got to get that all. It keeps my head toasty warm, but it makes it itch, too, for some reason. Okay. Anyway, as I was saying before I so rudely interrupted myself, there's no works we can do, friends. No works if we had a 100,000 years. No works we could do could save us. Salvation, redemption, eternal life in heaven is not possible by us. Not possible. So many, just about every one of the churches in the world today preach that you got to have a little bit of works and a little bit of faith, and they, every one of them, are wrong. The only works involved in salvation was the works of Jesus Christ. We have to believe in him and of what he did. And we have to believe that he is coming back soon for us. We have to believe this word right here. And did y'all see that finger right there, that ring finger? There's no ring on it. I got so much work to do. Seriously, y'all. The eunuch talked to Philip. He found a body of water. Said, look, doth that hinder me to be baptized? I found some water. And Philip answered and said, Philip said, if thou believest, with all thine heart, thou mayest be baptized with that little spot of water over there. And the eunuch answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. All that man had to do was say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then he is saved for all eternity. All it takes from us is faith and belief in Jesus. And that faith, it says, is a gift to us through God's grace for salvation. All we got to do is use the faith that God gives us. So what in the world are you waiting for, dear friend? If you waited until you were perfect enough, sinless enough to be saved. You ain't ever going to get there. Hello. Because you are never going to be good enough and you're never ever going to be sinless until you put all your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and he, through his blood that he shed for the remission of your sin and my sin, will wash 
us clean as white as snow even. And that's not a temporary salvation. That is a permanent throughout all eternity kind of salvation. Only my Lord, my God, my Jesus, my Savior, my Redeemer can do that. No preacher can for sure. Goodness gracious, that's some of the most wicked, evil people I ever met. In person and on TV and on, what you call it, YouTube. They're everywhere now. Mega churches full of those kind of preachers. All right, I think we're about done here. That rabbit chasing, jaw flapping, whatever I call it, was good stuff. Most that I give you is just nonsense. But y'all know when I'm playing and when I'm not. He commandeth the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Man, I would love y'all, I would love y'all to just sit down with me for three or four hours and read together. That would be just so awesome. So I could sit here, stuff like this gets me so happy and so excited, I could sit here and read it all night, and sometimes I do. But it's more fun if you're with somebody, you know? Y'all can discuss what you're reading, and you can feel the Holy Spirit talking to us, working through us, and that is exciting. Anyway, I've let my talk too much. I love you, and if it's Lord's will, I'll be with y'all in the morning. God bless you, friends.